Hey everybody, uh, ah, yes, let's talk about the elephant in the room, D the hair. Okay, let's face it, this was one of those failed attempts at just trying to let my hair go and, you know, wash your hair and run out the door and I forgot that I had to do this video today. So, it's the day before Thanksgiving and I'm just trying to run errands and tie up some loose ends and I gotta get home to cook and yada, 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 yada. So anyhow, bad hair. So if you came here for today for hair advice, yeah, came to the wrong place. But if you came here to get a little bit of painting advice on doing pet portraits, and in this case, a little Maltese dog, then you did come to the right place. So in today's video, we're going to do the little Maltese named Mikey. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna get started on that. So again, thanks for joining me. And if you are my subscribers, thank you so much for being my subscribers. And if you are not, here's your opportunity. Go ahead and uh, subscribe now and we'll go ahead and be friends and you'll know when the next uh, video comes out. And uh, yeah, and if you like this video, um, it will be available on Patreon in its entirety. Now, yeah, you'll hear about every brush I'm using, the paint colors I'm using, how I'm mixing my paints, all that good stuff in being able to achieve a, a pet portrait. So please be sure to check me out on Patreon. And uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into Mr. Mikey. Okay, here's what we're starting with today. This portrait of Mikey, the little Maltese, is going to be done on a nine by 12 uh, gessoed paneled substrate. So it's super smooth, lots, me get lots and lots of detail. And as you can see, here's my photo reference of Mr. Mikey. And here you have the starting lineup of our palette. And let me see, I have my colors kind of grouped in, <laughs> in parts. So in a sense, these are going to be my eye colors. I have cadmium red, I have vermilion, I have ivory black, that's Michael Harding's ivory black. I have Van Dyke brown, no, I'm sorry. Um, burnt, that's burnt umber. I have, that's brown matter. This is Van Dyke brown. Then I have a lot of what I would call fur colors. And so here I've got uh, ultramarine blue, Michael Harding's King's blue deep, titanium white, gray blue, and then these are some of the um, 12 shades of gray. I've got, of the 12 shades, I have the yellow gray, I have the mid gray, and I have the violet gray. These two colors here, this is uh, Gamblin's uh, Vibrant Red and Gamblin's Blush. So those are the colors we're starting off with today. And we will jump into this portrait of Mikey here in just a second taking a little bit of paint thinner and just doing a very loose wash right over the whole substrate and again I'm working off of a gessoed panel it's a masonite gessoed panel and I'm taking the clean brush there that you saw me show you there and I am just kind of sketching if you will by taking the paint off so I'm looking at my uh, my photo reference and I'm just kind of taking the paint off and it ultimately becomes somewhat of a really, really loose value study, but it's just a way for me to be able to see where things are going. And you'll see me checking right there. I was checking the angles off my reference with my paintbrush and making sure that the angles that I'm drawing onto my substrate are correct and matching the actual reference. And uh, yeah, so we're just kind of loosely popping this in here. Now I'm kind of just putting in some background and just to kind of get that overall shape in. And I'm going to very loosely um, 
you know, start laying down some paint into the actual dog. Now, one of the things I have to be very mindful of is all the transition that occurs from um, warm to cool and, you know, also being very mindful of the values that are um, in a white dog. And that's really the challenge. Just like in the last video you saw of the, the Labrador where I had a black dog, white dogs can be almost as difficult. So, you know, you have to really pay mind. Now, interesting story about this particular portrait. The client tracked me down. <laughs> she, I had done a portrait for her back in the 80s when I was still in college and I wasn't married at that time. So I kept my maiden name and used my name, Barrett, as, um, you know, is in my professional name. And luckily, I'm glad I did that because uh, this client who has a Suzanne M. Barrett original from the 80s was able to find me online and she wanted me to do her other portrait. So here we are. I am now doing Mikey's posthumous portrait. So here, that's, you, you just never know, right? That's just kind of a really cool thing. But yeah, you see here I'm putting in the values and it really does look like it's quite dark when you look at it this way. But knowing if you've watched me paint before, you know that I actually do a lot of layering of my paint. Now you'll notice that I'm constantly, there you go, checking my, my angles against my reference, making sure that everything's lining up correctly. Your paintbrush is a very cool tool and you can really use it for more than just applying paint. I really do check my angles a lot um, with my paintbrush against my reference. It really keeps me on track since I don't generally, I, I don't always do sketches, you know, like pencil or graphite sketches. So now you see me putting in this uh, little collar, this little blue handkerchief scarf. All the references that my client sent me of Mikey, he had, a, he had these scarves on in every one of them. So I was just going with what I saw here, but you'll see soon that I'll be taking that little scar off. Um, here, you know, I'm just kind of go doing the basis for the eyes and getting it in. So yeah, you'll see, I'll have be getting all the fun detail in a little bit later and changing shapes and all that good stuff. But yeah, stay tuned, let's see what else happens. Okay, funny thing. <laughs> this is why we have to be so adaptable when we're painting. I just saw an email from my client and they said they would prefer to not have the little neck scarf on this dog, but would rather have just his collar without his, as she said, ugly baby's tag. So, this is why we must be adaptable. <laughs> When painting the eyes and the nose of a white dog like a Maltese, um, I use a lot of uh, a lot of pinky colors. I'm using uh, the color Cap It Mortem by Sonalie, uh in this nose. I'm also using Brown Matter, which is a, a lovely color, a very red brown. I love it. I love it. Um, and you'll notice when I do some of the detail in the eye, if you look closely, you can barely see the pupil and you see a, a brown color where the iris is on the eye. And that generally, that brown color is a combination of cadmium red medium with black. 
and I like to, it just livens the eye up a little bit. So I am still working on the angles. I think, you know, at this stage of the nose, I think I have the angle a little bit off because I'm looking at it here, but don't worry, I'll get it fixed here in the end. You'll see, I, I constantly am adjusting, always checking my angles off my reference and uh, making little tweaky adjustments along the way. One of the challenges in painting a white dog like this is making sure that you're actually getting the structure and you can't let the hair dictate where everything goes. So you can see I'm using a lot of pinks and kind of a, like a, a yellowish gray. And so the area, what we call um, in animals in general, the break, the area where the, the muzzle stops and the, and the front of the skull starts, I have that kind of the pinky grays um, pinky yellowy grays on that front between the eye area because I want the fur to look like it's coming over or the hair to come over the top of his head and I'm being also mindful where the highlights are so the very front of his skull if you will on his forehead is is the whitest part so I'm using a soft brush just kind of blending it out I want him to look soft and um, puffy you know, there's unlike a poodle that might have a lot more curl, he's been combed and blown out. So he's all soft and, and fluffy in his picture. So that's how I'm trying to keep him in this picture, in this painting. So, you know, I'm still putting in those, those values, knowing I have to cover up some of the values with the whiter paint so that the detail will show through.
since Mr. Mikey has such expressive eyes, you have to try to get in, you know, where his eyebrows are. You know, they wrinkle or, you know, they can raise their little eyebrows and change their expression. So I want to make sure that I get every bit of expression in his eyes. And, um, and so I can actually try to show some of the muscle underneath the fur. Remember, I don't want the fur to dictate everything about Mikey's uh, portrait here. Now, I just want to remind everybody that this particular video will be available on Patreon in its full length. Uh, I just posted the uh, part one <laughs> of this video on Patreon, so you can check it out if you'd like to, and uh, you'll uh, get to hear all about every brush I'm using, how I'm mixing my paints, everything and you can you know feel free to comment on this video if you do have any questions and i'll try to get to you as soon as i can and if you're a patreon patron you can do that um on patreon as well so i'm just kind of still just checking my angles always checking check 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 because i've been known to change you know take out an awesome looking eye just because it's either too high or too low just because it didn't match my angles so uh, that's why I'm constantly checking and you can see I've just um, actually enlarged this eye a little bit more and pulled, them at, pulled it out towards the uh, right side of the substrate a little bit. Um, enlarging the nose a little bit, constantly checking angles. I like to do a lot of my painting is based on where it is in relationship to other things. So for example, the end of that nose comes out just a little bit past the eye, so I have to make sure everything lines up, and that's why you'll see me holding that brush up in funny, funny angles all the time. So when you look at the reference picture, you can see that there's some hair in his eyes and you know, he's a, you know, he's got all that little fun stuff going on. So I need to just make sure that I have my dark values in so that when I come back tomorrow, I'll be able to do all the, the detail that goes into um, his face here. Mikey almost seems to have a little smirk. <laughs> and so I want to be able to get that little bit of that, you know, his upper uh, part of his jaw and that smile in, if you will. I also know that, you know, he's also got that little bottom jaw too. And again, that fur, you know, I, I have to be able to pull that little chin out. So I, and sometimes when I'm painting a dog like this that has so much fur, I try to... <laughs> I try to imagine him naked. I try to imagine what he looks like without all the fur so that I can see the structure. And that's really, really important. And I'm starting to go in a little bit more thick and impasto with my paint. So you'll see that I'll, you know, especially in areas where I'm trying to create that form. So here over the eyebrow and forehead, I'm going in a lot thicker, a lot thicker with my paint. And um, I'll... You'll see if every now and then I'll be flipping my canvas over, my uh, substrate over so I can use the angles, get the angles correctly. And um, yeah, just moving along, just moving along.
I am flipping around between a small quarter inch sword brush, or actually it's a, a dagger brush, and a small one, uh, number one round eclipse. Both are rosemary brushes. And so I'm getting all the little details in around the eyes. So now you, those little eyebrows I was talking about before, now you're starting to see a little bit of his structure and I'll flip that, you know, you know I'll flip that uh, substrate as often as I need to just so it accommodates the, uh, my hand and what's comfortable for me as far as getting those hair angles in. But it's slowly building up and I, you know, I put that hair in front of his eye but then I kind of come back and change my mind because it, now he looks like he's squinting and I didn't really like that. So I'm actually enlarging the eye just a little bit and, uh, and that's okay. I will tweak it up like this quite a bit now I'm moving around and um, getting all the detail again I'm probably using the sword brush here like I say I, I'll say sword brush or dagger brush constantly I'll, I'll interchange those words because basically one's just a longer version of the other but I am getting the longer hairs that you can actually see the stacked up hair in the in his ear here knowing where his ear stops and his side of his face starts just by changing the angle of the hair He's getting in there. And yes, I am getting way, way more impasto as I go through this. Um, I don't know if you can really appreciate it in this uh, video, but if you see this painting in, in, <laughs> in real life, you would be able to texturally feel it with your hands how thick some of the paint is on this.
Okay, I am getting down to the wire. Now you can really appreciate some of this thicker paint. And I'm keeping the lightest values in the area that I know that the light would catch. So the pieces of his face or his hair that's most prominent uh, are going to generally be the whiter colors. And I'm, you know, it just the, making the transition slowly but surely. And I, I keep going back and forth. And you can see I'll change that little eye again. I'm, I'm never satisfied until I get the eyes exactly right and I'm getting closer and I can feel it. <laughs> it's getting there. So I've probably changed that little eye just a little bit. As far as the shape, again, I did not want to lose any of the expression in his eye. This is what my client remembers of her, of her pup. Um, doing posthumous portraits are so important and I have to tell you folks, I am so glad that I did my Phoebe's portrait when I did because it, it just, it, you know, it's comforting. It's nice to have. And this is, uh, was one of her favorite little, her favorite little boys here. And he was well loved. So I have to make sure I get it right. It has to be right. So I'm using a little round brush here and I'm getting in the little details around his muzzle, around his nose, being very mindful how I have to switch. See down here, it's a lot cooler on the bottom part of his uh, under his nose versus the top part of his nose. I have to uh, change the colors that I'm using. So I'm getting it in a little bit by little bit, but now you're starting to actually feel, have a sense of the structure in his face. So he's coming together.
we're down to the last little nitpicky stuff and it's just the tiny little details now and I'm pretty much switched solely to the smaller round brush and look at how thick some of this paint is so that's how he looked you know he had a lot of thick areas just big chunks of hair and just fluffy bunch of fluffy puppy goodness right here and I'm about to wrap it up here and I hope you liked what you see and if you have any questions whatsoever please please leave it in the comment section and I'll be glad to get to it and uh, yeah this was a fun little piece Okay guys, I think we are done. Here you see little Mikey. And you know, if I can get in a little bit closer to those eyes, uh, it's really hard to see, but they're not black. There's just a little bit of brown on the lower part of the, the actual pupil. That just gives him the that look of just eye. And now here you see the actual reference that I worked from to do Mikey. So yeah. There we have it. Well, here is Mikey's completed piece. Now, the fun part, of course, is getting into the eyes. And I'm trying to hold this so that it's not at a weird angle. Uh, yes, the paint is still wet, so therefore it's hard and we get a little shine. But layering hair on a white dog, you have to really look for the nuances in the the tones, the temperatures, and the values. That's That's where it's at. So yeah. This was a fun little piece, and I am hoping that my client in Knoxville is going to be pleased. And uh, yeah, this is Mikey. Mikey is a Maltese. So I hope you enjoyed watching today's video. And again, I'll remind you that this particular piece will be available on Patreon if you want to see the start to finish on this particular piece in real time, actual narration, and so much more um, information please become one of my patrons on Patreon. If you're my subscribers, thanks. And if you're not, why not? Go ahead and subscribe today. So today is the day before Thanksgiving and I just wanna wish everybody a very happy and healthy Thanksgiving. Um, by the time this video airs, it will be Friday. So you'll still be full, hopefully have plenty of leftovers and I hope you are staying well. So again, from Kingsport, Tennessee, I'll see ya, bye.